Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to implement a simple parallax scrolling background in Phaser 3. If you're not familiar, uh, parallax scrolling is a technique where you can create an illusion of depth using 2D images. And this works by layering images on top of each other where you'll move your foreground image more slowly than your background image. So in the example on the screen here, we have multiple images being rendered to our phaser scene. And we're just moving them at different speeds along the x-axis to give it this illusion of depth, even though this is not a 3D game. So to get started, in the uh, description of this video, uh, there will be a link to download a template, uh, which will include just a basic uh, project structure for a Phaser 3 game in TypeScript. Um, so, if go ahead and take a look at my code real quick here. Uh, this template uh, basically just have a main.ts file, and it just creates an instance of a Phaser game, and creates a new scene class, and then we just have some uh, placeholders uh, for our preload and our create methods. Here, the first thing we want to do is install our project dependencies. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open up our terminal, and we're going to run yarn install. Uh, if you're using the npm as your package manager, you just do npm install, and then I'll install the project dependencies. Uh, so for our project, uh, we are importing the phaser library through npm, uh, so we need to install that. And since we're also using TypeScript, there are some dev dependencies for compiling our code. Uh, to make sure everything is working properly, if you go ahead and do yarn or npm run start, uh, you should go ahead and have your dev server up and running on port 3000 and so if we go ahead and just open that in our browser we should see that our game loads uh, with just a gray screen Next, what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to go ahead and load in the assets we'll be using in our game. Uh, so in our project folder, under the public assets and images, uh, these will be the images that we'll be using for our parallax scrolling background. And each of these images is set up as a tile sprite. And basically what that means is the beginning of our sprite is set up to align with the ending of our sprite. So in that way we can repeat it and just use that same image and just kind of have it scroll and look like one really long continuous image. So to go ahead and load in these assets, what we're going to want to do is in our preload method, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and load in our images. So we're going to do this dot load, and we're going to do image, and then what we need to do is provide uh, the key of our asset. Uh, so this will be the unique identifier. So I'm just going to do background, and then what we want to do is provide the path to our file. Uh, so this will be assets, images, and then background dot png and then after we load in our asset we should be able to go ahead and render out our tile sprite to our game so i'm going to do this dot add dot tile sprite and then we need to give it an x and y positioning uh, so we're going to do zero zero so our top left hand corner and then we need to give it the width and the height of our tile sprite um, so i'm just going to use two variables we don't have right now we're just going to do width and height and what these are going to what we're going to want is the width and height of our current game because uh, we want this uh, tile sprite to take up the whole uh, canvas element and then finally, we need to give it the texture of the, the asset key. Um, so this will be background, since that's what we uh, called it when we loaded in our image. And then we're going to go ahead and let's add in our width and height. So to get our width and height, we can actually pull this from the scale manager on our scene class. So we're going to do width, height, we're going to use object destructuring. So we'll do this.scale. And so these properties are really this.scale.width, this.scale.height, and we can just uh, grab a direct reference like this. Perfect. So if we take a look, it looks like our image is now showing up on our canvas element. However, it's not taking up the full uh, width of our canvas. And so the reason for that is our images are currently 320 pixels wide, and we set up our game to have 644 width. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and scale our, our uh, game objects. We're going to do set scale. We'll just multiply by two. And now we see our image is taking up our full uh, background here. Perfect. So the next thing we want to do is for our parallax scrolling, we need our game objects to move a little bit uh, during our update call. Um, and that's what's going to give us the illusion of, of the, the depth. So to do that, we're going to want to go ahead and add in our update method. Um, so our update method 
will allow us to move our game objects. And this is going to be called uh, multiple times uh, per second. Um, so every, every frame update. So to do that, we actually need a reference to our tile sprite here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new property on our class. And then that way we can store a reference to this tile sprite in that property and reference it down here. So we're just going to do private and we're just going to call this BG. And then we're going to do phaser dot game objects. And then we're going to do tile sprite. And so the reason we have the exclamation point is this property is not being initialized in our constructor. Uh, we're actually doing it down here in our create method. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do this.bg equals our tile sprite. And then what we'll do is in our update method, we're just going to do this.bg dot tile position. And we're just going to do the x position because we want to move left and right. And we're just going to go ahead and increment this by 0 0.1. So every time the update method is called, our image is going to move a little bit. And so that results this effect here. So now that we have our first background image working properly, uh, we actually just need to do this a few more times for our other images. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object. I'm just going to call this asset keys. And this is just going to be an object that has uh, some key value pairs uh, that are going to have the names of our assets uh, here. And then that way we can reference those values in both spots without having to manually specify it. Uh, so as an example, I'm just going to do background as my key. And then for my value, I'm just going to do background. And actually, that's not equals. That would be an enum. And so we're just going to do our object. So then what we'll do is we'll come down here and replace this. We're just going to do replace background with asset keys background. And then asset keys that background. And so this is just, like I said, uh, that way we're not duplicating ourselves. And we can change this name of our key in one spot without having to do it in multiple spots if we ever want to refactor our code. All right, so while we're up here, let's go ahead and create the keys for our three other images. So we're going to have fog. We're going to have foreground. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and make these all capitalized to keep them the same. All right, and then finally, we, we're going to have our trees. All right, and so now that we have these, we just need to create our three additional uh, properties on our class to keep track of them. So we're going to have fog. We're going to have foreground. I'm just going to call it FG. And then we're going to have our trees. Then what we'll do is we're going to load in these three images. So we're just going to copy and paste this a few times. So we'll have our trees, we will have our foreground, and we will have our fog. All right, then we just need to update the names. So we're going to have our fog PNG. We'll have our foreground PNG, and then our trees PNG. All right, and now we just need to create our game objects with these images. So we can just copy and paste this as well. So we're going to do our background. We're going to do our trees. Then we're going to do our foreground. And then we're going to go ahead and do our fog. And we'll just update our asset keys. So we have trees, foreground, fog, if we go ahead and save, our scene should update, and we should see all of our different images being rendered on our canvas element. All right, and it's because we didn't update the positioning on the other ones, everything else is being rendered in the order that we placed it, and only that background is actually being moved right now. So one thing that is important is when we create our game objects, we want to make sure we create them in the order we want them to render, or we need to set the display depth so that way they render appropriately. Um, as an example, if I want to take my trees here 
let's say that was the last game object that I create. If I go ahead and create that last, you'll see now here my trees are being created on top of my other game objects, which uh, will ruin the uh, scenery that we're trying to display. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind if you're trying to render out other uh, background images as part of your parallax scrolling. All right, so the last thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and just update our positioning on each of these game objects. So then that way it'll complete our scene. So we're going to have our trees. Oh, and that's not trees. We're just going to fix that really quick. There we go. Okay, perfect. So we have trees now, and then we will have our foreground followed by our fog. And we'll want to update our positioning. Um, so we're just going to do for our trees, we're going to do 0 0.14. We'll do 0 0.2. And we'll do 0 0.7 uh, for our updates. And that will complete our scene. Uh, so now we have our parallax scrolling background. So one thing, uh, other thing to note is for each of our images, we want to scroll them at different speeds to create that illusion of depth. And that makes it appear that objects that are further away, they're moving slower. And so that gives that illusion that they actually further away in our scene. Versus if we had everything just moving at the same speed, it would really, it would ruin that illusion. It would just look like one image that's moving, as you can see here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and revert those values. Perfect. All right, and that's all it takes for to create your parallax scrolling background. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content, and thanks for staying towards the end. Uh, if you're interested in more Phaser 3 content, please see the links that are showing on your screen.